All right. Hello once again. Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of my quest to make it easier for students to understand the material in the Rankin Technical College AWD 1000 Web Development Technologies and AWD 1111 Database Driven Web Development Classes, I'm creating a series of video presentations based on the ebooks written by Mr. Flavio Copes. So far, I have created a series of videos on Mr. Copes's HTML ebook. Then I went and did more on the CSS ebook. Then more on the JavaScript ebook. And I am now on the ES5 to ES Next ebook. And I'm just about halfway through the book. <clears throat> and I ended the last video a little bit early. It's only about half the size of most of them. And I did that because we're starting something new here that's called the spread operator. And the spread operator is something fairly new, but it's unbelievably strong and it allows you to do things that you couldn't previously have done or that took a lot more effort to do. So notice what it says here. You can expand an array, an object, or a string using the spread operator. It says, let's start with an array example. So here we've got an array, and that array is got in there one, two, and three. It says you can create a new array, all right, by using the, the, the key here is the dot, 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 followed by the name. So this is going to put in the one, two, three from here, or copy it, and add to that four, five, six. You can also create a copy of an array by doing this. Not only does this work for arrays, but as it said, it works for objects as well. The operator, as it says, has some pretty useful applications. The most important one is the ability to use an array as a function argument in a very simple way. All right, so here we are passing in the array. And again, we don't even have to know what the size of the array is. It'll pass the whole thing in regardless. All right. The rest element is useful when working with array destructuring and spread elements. So when you look here, again, starting with a dot, 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 and it's got others. All right. So again, you can write some things differently than you did in the past. And, and by and large, whenever you've got something like this, why did they do this? So you wrote less code. All right. I mean, usually, not always, but usually that's probably one of the biggest mitigating factors. And when you're, when you're going to come in and try to have some kind of a new ability to do something that you couldn't do before. All right. So ES 2018 introduces REST properties, which are the same, but you use them for objects. And also spread properties, as it says, they allow you to create a new object by combining the properties of the object passed after the spread operator. All right. The next thing that's discussed in here are sets. And as it says, a set data structure allows you to add data to a container. A set is a collection of objects or primitive types. And you can think of it as a map where values are used as map keys with the map value always being a Boolean true. All right. So you create a set like this. You add items to it using an add method like this. But each item that you add to a set must be unique. So as it says, if you call add one multiple times, it won't add new items. You'll just overwrite, I believe, the item every time you're doing that. You cannot add multiple elements to a set at the same time. Rather, like shown here, you need to call set multiple times. You can check if an item is in a set by using the has operator. 
All right, there's also a delete operator, which, as it says, allows you to delete an item from a set based on the key that you put in. And there's other operations that you can run on sets as well. There's a size property. There's a clear, which deletes everything. Notice there's a for of that you can use in here. And when you do this, you can work on the keys or the values. And it says they're equivalent in this case. All right. There's also an entry method, which, as it says, returns an iterator, which you can use basically to iterate or work your way through a set. Calling i.next will return each element until the iterator ends. You can also use a for each, or you can just use a for of. All right, a lot of the stuff that's in here, until we run through some examples in class, probably aren't going to make a whole heck of a lot of sense, and that's okay. All right, you can initialize a set with a set of values. You can convert the set keys into an array. You can also have what's referred to as a weak set. Notice a weak set is a special kind of set. In a set, items are never garbage collected. A weak set instead lets all the items be freely garbage collected. So when we're talking about garbage collection, typically what the garbage collector is, is it is, it is a function of the operating system that comes around and it's, it checks to see whether or not uh, something is still being referenced. And if it is, it leaves it alone. And if it's not, usually it kind of marks it as being unused. And then when it comes around again, if it's still not used, it'll typically get rid of that. All right. Every key of a weak set is an object. When the reference to this object is lost, the value can be garbage collected. You cannot iterate over a weak set. You cannot clear all items from a weak set. You cannot check the size of a weak set. As it says, it's generally used by framework level code and it only has an add, has, and delete method. All right. Next is a map, and as mentioned right there, a map allows you to associate data to a key. Before its introduction, people generally used objects as maps. Okay, something like this. ES6 introduced the map data structure, which as mentioned here, provides a proper tool, tool rather to handle this type of data organization. You can see how you create a map. You can also see how when you add items with set, it is now a key and a value, a key and a value. You can get the items out of the map by using get, followed by that key. You can delete an item from a map by delete, followed by the key. You can delete everything by using clear, Sorry about that. All right, sorry about that. We were talking about maps. And you notice there's a map dot delete where you delete. Again, based off of the key, clear. You can, there's a contains, which is it has a size. When you set up a map, you can initialize it with a set of values. So again, those are key value pairs. Just like any value, it says there can be used as the value of a key value entry. Any value can be used as the key, even objects. Now, it gets a little bit heavy when you start doing that. If you try to get a non-existing key using get out of a map, it returns undefined. <clears throat> As far as iterating over a map, as it says, map offers the keys method that you can iterate over all of the keys, and it also offers a values method that you can use to iterate over all the values. So the difference between these two is just this. And they call the keys when K and the values V. You can also iterate over both at once with the entries method.
All right. You can convert the map keys into an array and the values into an array if there's need be. And again, the reason that you might want to do something like that is there are built-in JavaScript array functions that I believe by default you cannot run against a, uh, a map. A weak map, as they say there, is a special kind of map. Again, where the items are never garbage collected. I know that we kind of talked about this before, I believe. All right. And let's see. We're at 10 minutes. So let's do the generators. <clears throat> and as they mentioned right there, a generator is a special kind of function with the ability to pause itself and resume later, allowing other code to run in the meantime. The code decides that it has to wait so it lets other code in the queue run and it keeps the right to resume its operations when whatever it's waiting for is done. It sounds a lot like working with asynchronous, to be honest with you. All this is done with a simple keyword and that keyword is yield. When a generator contains that keyword, its execution is halted, all right? You can have many yield keywords, and thus, <clears throat> thus it may halt itself multiple times. Gener generators enable whole new paradigms in programming, such as two-way communication, which kind of makes sense. So if you're going to be writing an app where you do want to be able to communicate with someone or another program or another whatever. All right. Long-lived while loops, as it says, which do not freeze the program. And they give some examples. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to stop here, even though it's a little bit early, because that was all the stuff for ES 2015. Next, we jump into ES 2016, and I'll do that starting in the next video.